and, and you know, have a good day. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it turned out that he was watching my back the whole time I was in there. And anybody that wanted to fuck with me, he was squashing it before I even knew anything about it. Because like the scariest thing that happened was about 10 days in the black guy comes by my cell and I'm sitting in bed reading. Wait, reading do Lord, we know this black guy? Your friend? The this dreaded is... black guy I'm giving the radio to. Yeah. He comes by and he goes, yo, man, I thought I'd let you know. There's somebody in here that's wanting to get with you. And I went, I sit up in bed. You know, I'm lying down, <laughs> like reading like this. And I sit up, I go, <clears throat> Mark, place here. <laughs> Someone's looking to get with me. I already yeah. have a workout partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, they looking to get with you. I was like, well, you let them know that I'm not looking to get with anybody and I won't go down without a fight. I was like, that's not happening. He's like, I'll pass the word on, man, but you watch your ass. And I'm thinking like, I wonder if he's going to add literally at the end, but he's not a smart guy, so he just walks away. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm terrified because he's not bullshitting. He's very serious. He whispers this to me and he, he, he's, he's one of my closer associates in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, fuck. Now I'm terrified of the shower. Now I'm terrified to go in there. So now I have to time my showers for when snow showers. Now, now me and Snow, the big Mexican guy, like we work out together already. So it's, it, it works out fine that yeah. we both go back to ourselves, get our towels, get our stuff, and we go to the shower. And, uh, and so the shower, you walk into this room and there's five different shower heads. And they're each separated by a partition wall with a shower curtain behind you. It's very private. And It's nicer than my high school showers. It's really nice. The, those shower heads have excellent pressure and never-ending hot water. Uh, it's excellent. And uh, by this time, I've got good soap. It's the same brand I use. Uh, good shampoo. Um, I've got a good towel. I've got everything. So you, you walk up to the, the door of this thing. It's a, it's a shower curtain, too. And you pull it back a little. And you avert your eyes in case somebody's standing there naked because you don't want to get caught or accused of, of cock-looking cock yeah. or something Meat like gazing. that. Yeah. Meat-gazing. <laughs> <laughs> a dick peek. And you, you, you say... You say as as aggressively and as and as uh, much of a manly tone as you can. Shower, and and whoever was last to go into the shower, you don't go shower. <laughs> so whoever was the last to go into the shower, they call back, and they answer with whichever showers are available. So if somebody's in one and three, they go two, four, and five, and then you holler back, going in five, and then you do it while averting your eyes once again. Because there's sh it's just a shower curtain separating you. And then I would always go in five because that was a handicapped shower and it was very nice. It had the big big shower head. Yeah. And the and the like chest high uh shower thing too. So I would take incredibly fast showers. I get clean, then I get the fuck out. And when you're ready to leave, you say, leave in five. And everybody says, All right. And then you get the fuck out, averting your eyes again. But the <laughs> whole time, I'm gonna say from from the from from the time that dude told me that until like two weeks ago. I was terrified to go to the bathroom the whole time. Like, like, like there was a day when I didn't catch snow in time and I was like, I'll shower tomorrow. <laughs> What's the actual bathroom situation like? Uh, there are three, no, there are four toilets in stalls, just like in a department store or anywhere else. There's a mm -hmm. urinal and there's like six sinks. So it's, it's fine. Um, you know, the toilet paper was awful. I, I immediately bought toilet paper. Like I got some fucking Charmin right away. It is a must-have item to anyone who's about to uh, go to prison. Get your Charmin toilet paper. So, yeah, the snow guy, it turned out, was like watching my back the whole time. And anytime anybody would say anything about me or anytime I did something I shouldn't do, he would pull me to the side and be like, hey, like one time I pissed and I didn't wash my hands. He's, hey, somebody said you didn't wash your hands. I'm like, somebody told you I didn't wash my hands when I pissed. <laughs> He's like, yeah got to wash up, man. People, people take that shit seriously, you know, cause you're going to touch the microwave or you're going to touch the TV. And I'm like, I didn't even touch my dick. I was, I was like, I just, I just whipped it out. He's like, don't matter. They don't know. For all they know, you're washing your hands and pissing there. You got to wash your hands. And I'm like, I'll lather them bitches up. Like I'm about to go into the operating room yeah. from now on. <laughs> if it'll, it'll keep anything bad from happening or anybody from yelling at me. So now I'm scrubbing the fuck out of my hands every day. And they're like, I've got OCD. <laughs> they're getting red. Like <laughs> I'm looking around like, All dry, you know how red man. they are? <laughs> I only use hot water. Just hot. Just hot. Like, the, my skin's cracking. I'm so clean. Yeah. <laughs> they're coming out like crab legs. <laughs> 
And I'm just like, this is just, <clears throat> then I get into a shouting match with a guy one morning and the, at the TV room, cause there's a, it's just me and a black guy. I get up at four in the morning at this point of my, my stay. And it's just me and this black guy. And, uh, and the TVs are on the local, local news. Like all of them are. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what's going on in Montgomery, Alabama. I don't give a fuck. I'm yeah. going to change the white TV to everybody loves Raymond. I want to watch the sitcom. He goes, yo, we watch the news in the morning. And I was like, well, watch it on one of those TVs, man. There's three fucking TVs here. We watch the news. <laughs> Wait, he's, he's about to crack. I found out later he's been in there for 14 years and he's got two more. <laughs> two more. This maniac. This maniac named Chico. He's coming out takes, soon. He takes them uh, unless he has a fucking conniption fit over the over the morning news while I'm away. Then then yeah, he'll get out soon. So Chico wanted all four of the TVs turned to the the local the various local news <laughs> ABC, CBS, NBC. He wanted all of the local news stations on simultaneously, so he'd know everything that was going on in downtown Birmingham that morning. He needs three different fucking weather reports, three different weather girls. It, and I'm just like, all right, I'm like, all right, here you go. Click, 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 click. Happy now? He goes, great. I was like, all right, fine. Won't come back. I just won't come back in the mornings and watch because I don't want to watch the morning news. It, for some reason, it just seemed real depressing to like watch what was actually going on just outside the fence and down the road. Like, like CNN yeah. is one thing, but I just didn't give a shit what was going on. And in, boring uh, as fuck. And boring as fuck. Um, it it was a weird fucking time. They were, um, but th those guys thinking that I was a snitch didn't wear off until about six weeks ago, like or about two weeks ago. It was when I started like making more friends. When people started realizing, like, oh, I guess he, he's actually just in here. Hmm. I guess, I guess the, hmm. I guess judges really do give people <laughs> two months. So there wasn't of friends. <laughs> they just got to yeah. know you over time, and you started to fit in. Yeah, yeah. Um, they, they they trusted me with the locations of the hidden knives. Um, I was trusted with that information. Um, so if you want to slice up like an onion, which is contraband, by the way, we're not supposed to have onions. Or if you want to make your own relish, because there isn't relish out of a pickle. Um, you know, you, I've seen people nibble <clears throat> those items down and into chunks. Mm -hmm. The guys who, the, but, but I was trusted with the sacred location of two of the three knives in the dormitory. Um, I won't say where they were, but they're hidden in public areas. <laughs> I won't say where they were. They're hidden. What yeah. was that last word? In, in like a public area, like like oh. like not in anybody's cell oh. and not in anybody's locker. They're put somewhere where nobody would get in trouble. They're hidden in a, a third can't party pin location. It to anyone, right? Exactly, exactly. And and you know they've just it's a really rudimentary blade that you can chop up an onion or a tomato with without mushing it all up. Mm -hmm. Um, the 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 stuff that people ate in there, I couldn't get over it. First of all, let me start with this. There's a currency in prison. They're called Max. M A C S Max. And I didn't know what a Mac was for the longest time. And I didn't want to ask. I, I felt like a dummy. And then I realized it about four or five weeks in. Max are packages of mackerel fillets. Oh, I Ew. I was ungodly confident it was mac and cheese. You know, <laughs> the craft in the blue yeah. box. I was like, I can't believe Kyle didn't figure this out. I guess if no. these guys are working out all the time, they need their protein, their lean meats, and so they want their max. It what it is, it's a seventy it's a seventy cent item in the commissary. So it's close to a dollar, and it's also one of the cheapest things in the commissary, and it's meat. And they all ate it. It's what they all ate. It was disgusting. I only tried it once. Like like Sn snow would cook for me and and I and I ate some of it and I was just like, this is not for me. This is fucking gross so like they gamble with max they 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 loan each other max to for like favors and any number of things like they bet on football games you know I'll be, i got 15 max that the bills are going to cover the spread uh they'll play poker with max you know i'll buy in for 20 max and he'll have he'll have some like chips that they make out of tearing playing cards in half uh, in half each of those is a chip each of those is a mac mm -hmm. and i couldn't understand why these motherfuckers were eating max because there was tuna in there and what I ate the whole time was chili. I found right away. Yeah, Thumbs down, I, Kyle. This isn't Jackie's chili. This is prison <laughs> chili. This is good chili. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a company called Brushy Creek. I wrote it down because I want more of it. That's how good it was. All right. I stopped going to the cafeteria the third day I was there. Not because the food was bad. It was good. It was like high school food. 
Huh. It was just like high school food. They had hamburgers. They had hamburgers and hot dogs on Memorial Day. You know, they had hamburgers once a week, fried chicken once a week. They'd have baked ziti. It was pretty good. You know, Swedish meatballs one day. Breakfast was gravy and biscuits, uh, grits, oatmeal, stuff like that. Scrambled eggs some days. Pancakes once a week. It was fine, but I didn't feel like it was good for me. So like three days in, whenever I start working out with snow, I'm like, I'm going to go on a diet. So I, I averaged out to about 375 calories a day for the, the two months I was there. I did the math because a bag of chili is 300 calories uh, and I'd eat one bag a day. But most days I would skip at least one day. I would eat today, not eat tomorrow, eat the next day. Um, so I would eat like every other day. But one, one week I went four days without eating. Uh, and Jesus Christ. Yeah, because they're not doing a lot. I, I'd run my three miles during, during in the morning and then you're just like sitting there like reading or watching TV or sleeping. That's all that's all you're doing all day. On the, um, so you said you were getting up at 4 a.m. Were you napping? What's the napping situation like? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the the schedule is this. At 5.20 in the morning, the lights come on. Boom. Bright as fuck. Fluorescent right in my eyes because I'm on the top bunk looking straight up. And that wakes you right up. You're, you're up now. And at 7.30, your bed is supposed to be made. Now, you can still lie in that bed. But it has to be made beneath you. So, and if if you get caught still in the covers, the guard caught me one day and he went, ding, ding, ding. You need to make the bed and get over them covers, buddy. I was like, ah, no problem, man. I just overslept. All right, good day. And just kept moving along. You know, it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. But I would, that was the only time it ever happened because it was really the only time I've ever done it. It was a fluke that he caught me. So I had a sheet and I would cover up with the sheet to take a nap. And I had a pillow that I made by taking a sweatshirt and stuffing it full of like regular shirts. So I had a, like a, a decent pillow and I would nap a lot. I would try to sleep the day away as much as I could. Mm -hmm. Like, like the middle part of the day when there was like, I'd already eaten or I'd already read for like four hours and I was just, you know, I needed to just chill out and nothing on TV or, or midway through my stay, they took the televisions away during certain daily hours so that people would work their jobs. You know, I would just sleep through that. And it was, uh, you're trying to create the stasis they have in sci-fi where you can wake up two months later. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I said that openly. I was like, if I can go in a coma and wake up when I get out, because this is this is like thrown away life. Like, like there's no mm -hmm. there's no there's nothing to gain.